Hey, I'm Evan, head of engineering for RM Stator. Today we're here to introduce the brand new Revolt voltage regulator rectifier for power sports applications. This is our brand new patent pending technology designed in-house and it is made right here in Colorado. So it's made in America, really excellent product and we've got a lot of features to go over so we can explain to you just why you need this. Um, we set out to build the best power sports regulator rectifier on the market. Uh, we've been in this business a long time and there's a lot of good parts out there, but nobody has really gone back to the drawing board and improved the voltage regulator rectifier in a very long time and we wanted to do that. Um, you're all probably familiar with MOSFET and series type regulators. These are great improvements over the original technology. Keep in mind the original solid state voltage regulator rectifier combination unit came about in the early 80s or so, and it really did not change significantly since then. Um, the MOSFET was a great improvement by using transistors in the design, and the series type regulator is a great improvement as well by using a different type of regulation that can uh, improve stator life and it can run cooler uh, for longer life in the regulator. All of these are good things, uh, but all of them were not good enough for RM stator. So we wanted to go back to the drawing board and figure out what really fails in these things and what we need to do to improve it. Um, throughout our long history of building and selling these parts, the main failure, about 90% of failures in these is the diodes that are used in the rectifier. These are the electronic components that are responsible for converting alternating current your stator is producing into direct current to charge your battery. They do a good job, but they generate a ton of heat in use, and it is very hard to get that heat away from the electronics and prevent failures of those diodes. Lots of fixes have been used over the years using higher current rated diodes and thicker uh, aluminum back circuit boards to try and cool them. Um, we've seen lots of success in using CNC uh, billet aluminum CAD designed housings that can pull heat away from the electronics better. So lots of things have been done to improve these parts, but nothing has really been done to look at the core technology and actually improve the electronics. Now, like I said, this is patent pending and I'm not going into tons of detail about exactly how this works, but what I can tell you is that we looked at the core root cause of the problem and we eliminated the diodes from the rectifier. And doing this really solves the problem with these type of parts. The regulation function works well and we didn't see a need to focus on improvement there. Typically these regulate very well, but we needed to improve the rectifier and that is what we did. So like I said, that eliminated 90% of failures in most of these units uh, in previous types of voltage regulator designs. So let's talk about the Revolt. Um, it generates up to 50% less heat than a lot of OEM uh, comparison regulators. So those are the Shindinjin SH847 series, the Shindinjin MOSFET regulators, even the large, very large case uh, regulator housings that are meant to dissipate a lot of heat. Um, we can compare it to anything out there and we have got up to a 50% decrease in heat uh, measured right at the heat sink housing. And later in this video, we're gonna show you a lot of live test results uh, on our Can-Am uh, Maverick. And we can do a comparison test using our split system that is a dual output stator. So it lets us uh, have a live accurate comparison of Revolt versus uh, any other competitor part and even some of our own parts. And you'll see that later. Um, so like I said, massive improvement in heat dissipation uh, versus all OEMs and our competitors parts. And we definitely put our money where our mouth is with a lifetime warranty on these to prove it. Um, we have a CAD designed um, CNC machined billet aluminum housing. This is our own in-house housing design. So we figured we already had a really nice CNC housing that we like and we've used on many of our regulator technologies in the past. It looks great, it works great. However, we thought if we're building a new part, we're gonna redesign the housing as well. So we have a brand new aluminum housing. We have changed the cooling fin design. This regulator is not totally reliant on tons of air cooling like previous designs, but we also thought might as well improve it while we're at it. So we have lots of thinner cooling fins with lots more surface area. Just the housing alone is good for uh, a very impressive um, decrease uh, in temperature, pulling heat away from the electronics. So I think this is really nice. It looks great. It's a premium product and it will look great on any vehicle. This is a regulator you actually want to show off. You put it on your motorcycle or ATV. It's not something that needs to be hidden and it's something you really want people to see that you have. Um, it fits many OEM fitments out there because of our housing design. It's a common size and it also has slotted mounting holes as you can see. 
So that will let it mount up into the OEM mounting location on tons of vehicles, ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles, uh, you name it. But it can also be used really universally because of those slotted mounting holes and its compact size. So it can be mounted in lots of locations. Um, however, we wanted to make it really simple to get this on lots of vehicles as easy as possible. So we have, at no extra cost, adapter harnesses to include with Revolt for tons of fitments. Uh, you can check our website for all of them. So we've got adapter harnesses that will uh, give you a plug and play fitment to ATVs, motorcycles, side-by-sides. Um, these are just some of the options. We have here a Suzuki one, I believe. This is, I believe, some Honda ATVs. We have another, not sure off the top of my head, but Japanese uh, plug and play fitment or maybe Triumph. So these adapter harnesses make it really nice and easy to be able to mount this in an original location and plug it in. Um, we also used fairly standardized connectors now. I'm sure you've seen regulators, you've seen these. These are pretty standardized connectors used by most OEM manufacturers. And what's really nice is they're keyed, they're color coded, and they will mean the same thing on any vehicle. So your gray connector is always your stator input, three wires, three yellow wires typically and the black connector is your battery uh, output. And the inner terminal is battery positive, the outer terminal is battery negative. It's a very simple five wire hookup, and this can be used on any three phase permanent magnet charging system. So that is a ton of vehicles out there. Pretty much every modern ATV, motorcycle, side by side, you name it, even as some outboard motors, snowmobiles, so tons of fitments out there. Um, like I said, you can use it to upgrade anything. It has a lifetime warranty. So we're putting our money where our mouth is. These are excellent products and we really want to get them out there and get people paying attention. So make sure you check out later in this video where we show live temperature testing. It really is as good as we say it is. I use it on my own bikes. We put tons of miles on these. We have customers that have ridden them uh, to the southern tip of Mexico. We have people running these in brutal heat conditions and they hold up. Um, come in our Revolt uh, custom packaging, this is a really premium product. We want it to look and feel that way. We've got our card with some temperature charts and information about the product. We have our lifetime warranty registration card. And you get some stickers, of course, RM Stator keychain. And we've got a nice cutout with our regulator. And with every one, we also include a matching connector and terminal kit. So that will let you, if you did want to adapt this to another vehicle and we don't have the adapter harness available, keep in mind you can get those uh, at no extra cost within the, any of these uh, regulators, but we include the connector and terminal kit. So this will let you cut off your original factory connectors on your vehicle and crimp on ours to make this plug right in on your vehicle. Really simple. So I hope you like uh, taking a look at this and make sure you check out some of our test results. And I think you'll be really pleased with the brand new Revolt Regulator Rectifier from RM Stator. Starting out some Revolt comparison testing here in the Colorado mountains and we're gonna get started. We're running a split system, our dual output stator um, prototype here on our Can-Am Maverick at 2014. We've got one Revolt regulator here for one output and we're measuring temperature on top of the regulator housing with our thermocouple. And we have our comparison regulator here. This thing normally runs two Revolts down there, but we are running our uh, comparisons up here that'll just be mounted here so we can swap them easily. So we're starting with the, um, this is the uh, SH847, if you can see it there, Shindinjin, their largest case series regulator. This is typically the coolest running comparison regulator available OEM. So that's gonna be our start. And let's come in here, take a look at our setup. I'll be taking some temperature measurements every couple minutes and we'll put them together on video here so you can see. So here's what we're starting with. Our thermocouples aren't exact, but number one is our Revolt, 26 degrees C, and we're comparing it uh, to 29.9 C. Uh, both of these are room temperature ready to go. All right, so we're gonna get started driving, have some fun, and we'll keep taking temperature measurements. And we'll do a bunch of different comparisons here. Here we go. All right, here's a couple of minutes of idling. 26 degrees on the Revolt, 31 on the Shindigen series, so we're already seeing a split. All right, let's get started driving. All right, five minutes of driving, 
still 29.5 on the Revol and 42.1 on the SHA47. Let's keep going. All right, five more minutes. We're at 31.5 on the Revol, 46.6 on the Shindigo. All right, here's another 10 minutes or so. We're at 34.6 on the Revol. 54.5 on the Shindigen series, so we're seeing a good 20 degree split right now, and that'll keep going. All right, we had a good uh, test with the Shindigen series, uh, over a 20 degree difference. So now we're moving on to a Polaris. This is an OEM Polaris razor regulator. So this would be used on razors and sportsmen. So it's their large um, uh, regulator used with the 650 watt charging system. Okay, so we've got it plugged in over here. We're still running our same revolt over on this side and our revolt's already a little warm. So we're at 36.3 C on the revolt and we're starting at 28.1 C on the Polaris. All right, let's get started driving and we'll see what happens. All right, within a couple minutes, revolt stable at 37 and we've already passed the temperature, 39 on the Polaris regulator. That's within about three, four minutes of driving. So I expect this one will get pretty hot, pretty fast, so watch. All right, we're up to 38 on the Revolt and 47.1 currently on the Polaris regulator. All right, currently still stable around 39 degrees on the Revolt. This is pretty much its stabilized temperature and normal use. And we're currently at 52.3 on the Polaris reg. Now let's keep driving. All right, currently 42.5 on the Revolt and 56.6 on the Polaris. Pretty good temperature split. And I think we'll move on to a new regulator. All right, <clears throat> now we're comparing to our typical MOSFET, uh, Shindigen MOSFET regulator that's used on all sorts of OEM bikes or as an OEM on all sorts of bikes and ATVs. So we still have our Revolt at about 40 degrees, still hot from normal use, and we're at outside temp or 29C on the Shindinjin MOSFET. So let's take a look. We have it mounted here with our thermocouple. Ready to go. And we're using our same Revolt back here. One thing I want to point out, the Revolt is just warm to the touch. So we're measuring right at the heat sink where the electronics are. It does get just barely warm to the touch, so I can feel it, but it is not hot in any means. The other regulators are so hot, I cannot leave my hand on them. So we're measuring right at the heat sink and they are much hotter out here at the fins where you would actually touch it with your hand. So keep that in mind. We're giving you actual temperature at the electronics. If we were measuring out here at the heat sink, there would be a much bigger temperature split. But this is a great way to do comparison testing. So let's keep taking a look. All right, about 40 degrees and about 30 degrees. So let's see how fast this one gets up to 10. Here we go. All right, less than five minutes of driving. We're still 40 degrees stable on the Revolt and we've hit 40, right here, 44, 45 on the Shindigen MOSFET. So very quickly eclipsing Revolt temperature within a few minutes. Let's keep going and see what happens. All right, another five minutes of driving, 42 degrees on the Revolt and 55.9 on the Shindigen MOSFET. So I'm seeing a good split here and we'll keep going a little bit and do another measurement. All right, we're currently at 41.6 on the Revolt and 59.1 on the Shindigen MOSFET. So pretty good difference on these, almost 20 degrees. All right, so for a final test, I plugged in our second Revolt and have our thermocouple on this one. So we got a Revolt there. We have our other one we've been using all day over there. And 
Let's see where we're at. We're at 39 degrees Celsius on the one we've been using all day. And like I said, it's a hot day out. We're at ambient temp outside 33 on our other one. So we're gonna uh, just do some temperature testing uh, using two revolts. We'll check in on them a couple times just to see uh, that they stay stable and cool. Right on. Uh, 10 minutes of driving with two revolts. We're still at 41 degrees on our uh, one we've been using all day, and we are 38.9 on the other, coming up to 10. But it's staying stable, looking good. Alright, another 10 minutes is the revolt tents. We're at 44 degrees, and it's 42 degrees Celsius. So, about at our stabilized temperature for revolt. Both are looking good. We're sitting here charging both of our batteries well at idle, working for three volts. That's with our light bar and radio on, so we're doing really good. So that's what you get with Revolt. Really cool, really excellent regulator. And we're gonna hit the road.